Hello, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Chof, and we're back again with a new video. This is the most epic deaths in history by Serious History. Let's check Today, him out. Today, we're going over the most epic deaths in yeah, human brother. history. That's Number glasses. one, Ben K. We're starting this video off with a story ben of the greatest wingman in human this dude. history. It's a dark night in 12th century Japan, and a Buddhist monk century. named Benkei is wandering the streets of Kyoto. Yeah, with an abundance herself. of temples dotting the city, Wolverine? monks are a common sight, but this guy is different. At six foot six, he towers over everyone six, around him, six. and he's carrying Damn. a weapon. A like cross Kumita between Ko. a sword and a long spear Big called boy. a Naginata. His face gives off the vibes of someone on a hunt <laughs> more than someone seeking enlightenment. And it turns out he was out hunting that night mm. for his final victim. See, his Benkei final was victim. actually a Sohei, a warrior monk trained and battle-hardened in combat. Through his encounters with samurai, he's decided that they were an arrogant God class. God damn, they had like six teeth in between Unworthy them. Unworthy of their status in society. Jesus. The world would be a better place with less of them around. And this led him on a bloody quest damn. to duel and defeat 1,000 samurai, collecting their blades as trophies after 1, each victory. 1,000 samurai. At this point, he had collected 999 swords and was out that night. He had, he had beaten 999 samurai. Really? And nobody shanked him in the back? Looking Come for on, his final brother. duel. Like While actually? walking near Goto Tenjin Shrine, Benkei hears oh, the sound heard of a flute, this, and when looking to see who is playing it, he finds a small, thin samurai. Around the man's waist is a beautiful gilded katana, the perfect piece to finalize Benkei's <laughs> sword collection. He immediately challenges this samurai to a duel. The small man puts away his flute, and surprisingly, he agrees to fight. Mm. The two men walk together to Gojo bridge, bridge and draw their weapons. Full of confidence, Benkei rushes in, but despite towering over the samurai, Benkei is swiftly defeated. Instead of taking his life, the samurai just turns and walks away. His ass. Benkei is shocked Damn. and left in disbelief. In the following days, these unfamiliar feelings turn to anger and frustration. How could he lose to this tiny samurai? <laughs> he had defeated much larger men in the past. He decides to stalk oh, the grounds hey of Kiyomizu-dera Temple, waiting for the samurai to appear so he could take his revenge. Eventually, the samurai does show up, and Benkei immediately challenges him to another duel. He lost again. A fight that Benkei loses again. <laughs> Humiliated. He does look like an ape a little bit, doesn't he? He bows in defeat and tells the samurai uh, that he'll abandon his life as a monk and instead follow him as one of his retainers. Ah, oh, shit. The samurai, cool. who turns out to be Minamoto, Minamoto no, no Yoshitsune, Yoshitsune of the legendary Minamoto clan, agrees. No, Benkei joins him on his adventures, and the two become <laughs> inseparable. <laughs> they go on to join oh Yoshitsune's half-brothers and fight in the Genpei War against the powerful Genpei Taira, War. a clan that had killed Yoshitsune's father when he was just a baby. After five years of fighting, the Minamoto clan emerges victorious, and nice. one of Yoshitsune's half-brothers, Yoritomo, becomes Shogun. The oh. end of the Genpei War okay. had an unintended consequence. Without a common enemy, jealousy and suspicion soon oh, turn the shit. brothers against each other. Ah, the usual story in history. Multiple brothers, they fight together, they win, and then they kill each other. And Let's Yoshitsune go. And I Benkei everywhere. find themselves on the run, being Some pursued reason. by Yoritomo and his men. They eventually find protection under another clan called the Fujiwara, and the Fujiwara. pair spend a few years in relative peace in their domain. This ultimately Purple did can. not last, as with a lot of pressure and probably a lot of bribes, Yoritomo mm. finally convinces the Fujiwara to turn on his brother. Fujiwara no Hidehira, the man who was once their protector, betrays them. Oh, and on shit. June 15th, 1189, at the Battle of Korunugawa, the Battle of Koromogawa, Yoshitsune Moga. and Benkei find themselves trapped and outnumbered 5 to 1, with Ooh, 500 of Fujiwara's good. men surrounding their castle position. The forces clash, and Yoshitsune's men put up a heroic and effort. They're on the defense. Benkei in particular is a demon on the battlefield, <laughs> crushing enemies who are on average more than a foot shorter than him. But he despite their best efforts, Yoshitsune's men quickly begin to fall. Mm. With just a handful of retainers remaining, Yoshitsune realizes the battle is already lost. He turns to Benkei and tells him he plans to commit seppuku within the castle. He'll need time to prepare, and Benkei oh, understands God, the assignment. The Come on, he walks brother, to the just, bridge that serves as the fighting. only entrance to the castle and stands Maybe alone against Fujiwara's badass. army. Ah. Fujiwara signals a charge, and wave after wave of his men charge Benkei. He cuts them down one after another. No man can make it past him. Damn. In some stories, he's said to have single-handedly slain 300 soldiers on that okay. bridge. First off, no way in hell he's slain 300. I'm pretty sure he, even if you were skilled enough to be able to kill 300 people, you do not have the cardio capacity to swing your Naginata 300. Like, enough to kill 300 people in armor, okay? Skilled people. But bridge. yeah, it's probably ben badass. Benkei stands stoically behind a pot. By the way, there's also that one Viking that did this shit on a bridge, right? Plus there's also that Chinese dude that did 
Hi, there's a couple of dudes that died on bridges. Beckoning more men to cross. And despite orders to do so, none of the Fujiwara's men answer his call. Y'all have no balls? They all know shoot that him. stepping on the bridge was a death sentence. Bro, shoot Fujiwara, him. realizing his men are now too afraid to attack Benkei head on, calls in his archers. They'll take him out from yes. a distance instead. <laughs> the archers let loose a barrage of arrows that Smart. find their mark in Benkei's chest. Oof. But nothing happens. What do you Benkei mean doesn't happens? flinch. He has they armor? let loose another volley of arrows, but still nothing changes. Benkei's body is now a pincushion of arrows, she died but on his feet? standing defiantly no. in their way. No. Time passes, and both sides stare at each other across Bro. the bridge. Nobody dares to make the first move. Finally, Fujiwara orders some of his men onto the bridge, and they reluctantly do as they're told. <laughs> as they slowly approach Benkei, he makes no motion to ready himself. He's dead. They creep closer, and when they finally reach the Stop massive mark, they discover that while he was still standing, he was already dead. That's crazy, Benkei, bro. knowing he needed to buy as much time for his master as possible, had positioned himself to be supported by his spear even if he was no longer alive. How would you do that? In you his have last a spear stand, like here he showed somewhere. no pain or emotion while being hit with countless arrows. All to give the Ooh, illusion that he was, he was ready dead. to fight anyone who dared to cross. Because of his final actions, Yoshitsune had enough time to commit the seppuku ritual properly. Why though? Why not just fight with him? Maintaining his honor. God what damn a wingman. It. Yeah, that dude's, two, a, Yi Sun Shin. that dude's a badass, but I mean, listen. Probably most of that is fantasy, but he must have been a, enough of a badass for there to be fantasies the about him. The end of the 16th him, century you know? in Korea was a strange mix wait. of insane We're political in corruption and relative peace for its people. Damn. Korea wait, what? was a loyal tribute state to work? China, and the Ming Dynasty pretty much left them alone. Mm. To the east, the Japanese were busy killing each other in the <laughs> Sengoku Jidai, so they weren't a problem either. Aside from those pesky <laughs> jurchens who were constantly invading from the north, the rest of Korea was pretty boring and uneventful mm. with no major threats. I mean, the bro, boring, that does not sound like a minor threat. Some motherfuckers on horses coming yoinking your peoples up. No war's way of life led to many men choosing to pursue careers as scholars and government ah. officials, as it was now the Cute. best way to gain power and influence. This led to a bloated and corrupt political class and an extremely weak military led by generals hey, who yo, had never what's seen real combat. This combination of governmental corruption and a weak military would end up causing all kinds of problems in 1590 when Hideyoshi 1590. Toyotomi fulfilled the dreams of his former lord Oda Nobunaga and oh, reunified Japan. Wait, but he lost this, I'm pretty sure. He lost the invasion of Korea. And bringing an end to the Sengoku Jidai. The Japanese, yeah, for the first wolf. time in over 100 years, were not at war with each other. And if they weren't busy <laughs> fighting each other, who are they going to fight now? Mm, good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> hey, before you brutally invade Korea and stuff, can I ask you how many spam emails or texts do you get oh a day? Oh my god, we get ads? <clears throat> Is that a good warrior for uh, ads? Just takes a few clicks with the link in the. What an awesome deal! Now. <laughs> Evil Japanese left. sending messengers to Korea, saying that he was planning to conquer China and that he expects the Koreans to help him or else. Oof. Now, remember, Korea was basically like the Puerto Rico of China in this era, so they couldn't really help Japan conquer it. Not like they wanted to, anyway. They thought the Japanese were primitive barbarians. Plus, those idiots don't even know how to sail anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. About oh. that. <laughs> In 1592. I mean, to be honest, if China actually defended them on the sea, at that point, I don't think Japan would have been able to beat the Chinese on the sea. Hundreds of Japanese ships are that. spotted off the coast of Busan. This is no trading expedition. This is Damn. an invasion. He's Seeing the ass. massive Japanese fleet, two of Korea's top admirals freak out and sink their own ships so they won't have to fight the Japanese. What? And just like that. What? Ah. You know, what is the logic behind that, you stupid fuck? Better, why don't you just run away? People run away. They live and they have ships. They run away. They become pirates. And Half of Korea's why naval fleet is gone. What? The Japanese soldiers land in Busan unopposed Korea. and immediately begin conquering forts so and cities on their march to Seoul. The insane. Korean military is no match for Toyotomi's men, who are all veterans of a 100-year war. Damn. Korean casualties are huge. Not the 100-year war we know in Europe. and leave few survivors. <laughs> Within three weeks, they've marched Damn. to and conquered Holy Seoul. Holy shit. A few weeks later, they take Pyongyang and are at China's doorstep. The fall of Korea seems inevitable. But when all hope seemed lost, a man determined to defend his homeland and drive out these barbarian invaders rose to the occasion. A man who quite possibly was the greatest admiral to ever live. His he didn't sink his own navy? name was Yi Sun Shin. Yi Sun Shin. So, Yi Sun Shin's story is pretty interesting because unlike most shit. heroes, he wasn't necessarily liked by the elites at the time. 
In fact, I mean, kind of that doesn't mean that probably is a positive, to be Maybe honest. Him, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Basically, early in his military career, he was so good at inspiring no. his men and leading them to victory that he made everyone around him look bad by comparison. Mm. Remember, corruption was a big yeah. problem during this time. So out of jealousy, a and general falsely time, accuses like Yi of much. deserting the army in battle, and the king what? believes it. That he just strips works? Yi of his rank, has him thrown in prison and tortured. This the experience fuck? would probably make most men quit the military altogether. Wait, but he was eventually enjoyed released, again? and he managed to climb his way back through the ranks <laughs> to commanding this? a small. Okay, listen, that's enough to put this guy in the badass category. <laughs> fleet of ships Holy by the start shit. of the Japanese invasion. Now, despite the fact the Koreans were absolute trash at fighting at the start of this war, they did have one huge advantage over the Japanese. Which is? They'd been dealing with Woko pirates along the coast mm. for years, and so? because of this, they had developed ships called Panaksun, and later Panaksun? the turtle ship that were specifically designed to combat Japanese naval tactics. See, the Japanese weren't used to fighting at sea, so they mm. basically stuck to what they were good at, close-range combat. Their Board strategy the consisted of shooting at people with their rifles and boarding other ships, and engaging them with swords and spears. Fair enough. Their ships were more like transport vessels rather than battleships. Mm. The Panaksun, on the other hand, was a floating Then why did they do Two dumbasses sink the ships. I'm confused immensely. Tris, armed with cannons and was built in a way that made boarding Damn. impossible. These ships were a huge reason why Admiral Yi was able to have so much of his success nice. and are basically the only advantage the Koreans have. And they already sank over half of them themselves. The Anyways, Ad Why? I still don't understand why. Are you that big of a pussy? You'd much rather sink your own ship and swim to short than fight Admiral people? Yi was not a coward in a like the other ship? two admirals. I mean, of listen. If they don't have the ships, they can't land on the mainland, so they can't invade. Taking his ships, you know? he rushed his fleet Military of 34 ships head first towards the Japanese and began attacking them along the coast. Nice. His capabilities as a naval commander are obvious right from the start. In just a few weeks, using tactics to bait the Japanese to sail into vulnerable positions, he single-handedly sinks over 200 Japanese Damn. ships with no losses of his own. How many people in died battle in those? After battle, battle, he is vastly outnumbered, yet sails away victorious every single time. Nice. He is the sparkling piece of glitter embedded in the turd that is the Korean military. Damn. And by the end of the year, Yo, he keeps fucking going on the Korean military at that point. 150 Japanese ships. <laughs> Yi's efforts, Damn. along with the help of Chinese reinforcements, allowed the Koreans to drive the Japanese soldiers all the way back to Busan. And yeah, I imagine end, without reinforcements from the mainland, that would pretty of the much year, suck the war being entered in Korea there. Of a stalemate, with the Chinese Japanese and Japanese it. trying to negotiate a peace deal. So things are going pretty good for Yi, but remember the two admirals who sunk their own ships at the beginning of the war? Wait, are they still admirals? How are they not dead? I would want their head to be separated from their body in 15 pieces. Well, one of them, named Wang Gyon, is insanely jealous of Yi's How success. How is he alive? So jealous, he starts talking shit about Yi to the king every day. Oh my and when peace God, talks the with king China of as well? Toyotomi begins a second invasion of Korea in 1597, Gyon and other government officials frame Admiral Yi as a traitor. Again? The king agrees. For the second time. Bro, he's the only one doing shit, King. How dumb are you? Is this guy inbred? Is he like the rest? Like we have had that in Europe a little bit. Is he inbred? I'm in his the career. King? Yi is stripped of his rank and sent back to prison, where he is brutally tortured again. Again. He's said to be executed, but the king has a change of heart, and he Stupid instead sends Yi back to fight as a common soldier. A humiliation worse than death. Is it? With Yi out of the picture, Won Gyon is put in charge of the Korean fleet. Won Gyon. As you may have guessed by now, he was pretty terrible at his job. He drank okay. heavily. Okay, my question is, you're a soldier in the Korean Navy at this point. Why not just push him off? You know, accidents happen. Nowadays, people frag people. People there are drowning and shit. Poor decisions and if I was a soldier, I would have pushed this motherfucker off. Many of these commanders refused to fight under such a downgrade. Oh, they, and what made things even worse for Gion was that during the stalemate, the Japanese who had watched Admiral Yi wreck their shit over and over again mm, had adapted. actually learned how to fight at sea. Their Shit. new ships now had cannons, and oh. they began to use the same strategies Admiral Yi had used against them. This all comes to a head in the Battle of Chil Chiu Liang, Gyeong's Chiu first Chiu attempt Liang. to attack the Japanese fleet. With 200 ships and the best of Admiral Yi's men, Gyeong sails out to confront the Japanese, and he immediately falls into a trap. A trap they had learned from fighting Bruh. against Yi. The entire Korean Navy is decimated, God and Gyeong is last it. seen being chopped to bits by Japanese soldiers while trying to run away. Damn. The they king, made... realizing he may Salami have messed up, reinstates Yi Sun Shin as fleet. He might have messed up for the 15th time, Admiral, probably. And he takes command of the pathetic Super remains fuck. of the once undefeated Korean Navy. He's left with just 13 ships and a Jesus. few hundred demoralized men. 
in the following battle, outnumbered 25 to 1. God using superior damn. strategy, Yi manages to sink 31 of the 333 Japanese ships, again without losing a single ship of his own. This victory gives Yi time to rebuild this. his navy, but not gonna lie, things still look pretty grim for the Koreans. Yeah, it's fucked. But the next year, you know, Hideyoshi listen, Toyo building ships, it's not in the day's work, okay? That takes sometimes years. Hitomi becomes ill and dies. His last official order being to withdraw the Japanese army I from, this from somewhere back I would to Japan. This dude. Yi sees Monkey this as dude. the time to finally drive the Japanese out of Korea for good and mounts a final offensive against the retreating Japanese forces. At the decisive Battle of Noriang, Yi Nori takes Yang. his position at the top of his flagship with his son and nephew and begins oh, being a war drum to push his allied Korean and Chinese fleet forward. Admiral Yi's ship leads Those the charge, and he personally takes out way. 10 Japanese ships. Nice. The Japanese are in full retreat, and Yi beats his drum with intensity. Victory is within his grasp. After but... seven long years, Korea will finally be free of these invaders. But suddenly, he's hit in his armpit by a Japanese musket ball. Oh. He realizes the wound in is... In the armpit? Oh, that's bad. It's fatal, and he turns to his son and nephew and says... The war is at its height. Wear my armor and beat my war drums. Do not announce my death. I'll pretend to- His son oh. and nephew quickly carry his body below deck. It's and his nephew, badass. dressed in Yi's armor, quickly returns to the admiral's Holy position shit. and resumes beating the drum. Yi's men continue oh, to fight, never heard and about the Koreans this drive the Japanese out of Korea for good. Undefeated in battle, Yi dies below deck, listening to the sound of his drum, knowing that his homeland was finally free. Damn. Number three. Ben L. Oh, Sal we can't just leave that dude like that. That dude was a maniac. Now that's a badass. The monk was pretty good. This dude, he's a uh, he's a couple of levels above the monk. That dude's a legend. Element. Oh, I never heard about so that. So we dude. generally cover stories from like, more ancient times on this channel, but this story from World War II undeniably belongs on this list. This is the last World stand War of a II. dentist turned field medic who took out 98 Japanese soldiers before Damn. falling to his own wounds. Ben L. Salomon kid, was yeah. drafted into the United States Army in 1940, just three years after he graduated from the a USC dentist dental school. Feet. Salomon proved to be a model soldier and showed himself to be very skilled <laughs> Is that how you shoot? with both rifle and pistol. <laughs> he was quickly promoted, first to lieutenant and then to captain in 1944, nice. serving as a regimental dental officer of the 105th dental Infantry officer. Regiment. What does that even in mean? In June of 1944, Salomon and the 105th were deployed into active combat in Saipan. The Saipan. fighting in the Pacific was infamously bloody. Yeah, Casualties on the you don't really want to be there. Extremely high, and with so many soldiers having much more pressing issues than a root canal, <laughs> Salomon volunteered to replace the 2nd Battalion's field surgeon who had been wounded. By July, nice. both the Americans and the Japanese had suffered heavy casualties, mm. and the remaining Japanese troops on the island came to the realization that there was no path to victory. They decided on a final bonsai charge, yep. a mission with the, with the sole goal charges. of killing as many American soldiers as possible with no plan of returning. Bruh, Ur that must be depressing as hell, because most wars and battles are won when the enemy just, they give up, right? Because most people want to live, they don't want to die. These motherfuckers are at the goddamn mine. Early in the morning of July well, 7th, like, yeah, 1944, the Who remaining 4,000 Japanese soldiers began their final attack. Thousand. Solomon's field tent was positioned just 50 yards behind the front foxholes. Why? In minutes, his tent quickly filled I guess with over it makes 30 sense. injured troops. He injured. did his best to tend to the wounded, but the Japanese soon broke through the front oh, lines. Shit. He looked out of his tent and spotted a Japanese soldier bayoneting a wounded American who was lying damn. outside of the tent. Enraged, Salomon picked up the rifle of one of his patients and fired at the Japanese nice. soldier, killing him. Nice. Suddenly, two more Japanese soldiers popped into Salomon's tent and he fired on them, taking them out as well. Like zombies, four like more zombies. enemy soldiers then crawled oh, into the tent crawling. from the sides and Salomon <laughs> took two out with his rifle and another with oh, his bayonet. Bad. He what hit about the, the other fourth soldier in the stomach with the butt of his gun and a- God damn, what they teach these dentists? Wounded soldier he had been treating finished him off. Oh, nice. Realizing the situation was only getting worse, Salomon instructed his medics to evacuate Looks all like an of the wounded men. He would stay behind to give them cover so they could retreat. Solomon Maniac. grabbed a rifle and joined okay. the front. First off, what is that rifle supposed to be? The more I look at it, the more cursed it looks. I don't think that's a real thing. What the fuck is that? What is that? What is that thing? Lines. When he saw four men manning a machine gun fall to enemy fire, oh, he shit. rushed to the gun and four manned it himself, and, uh, my firing turn. burst into the charging Japanese soldiers. He continued to fight from that Damn. position until he was eventually overrun by oh, enemy soldiers. Shit. Days later, when the Americans returned to the battlefield, Salomon's body was found slumped over the machine gun, with 98 dead Japanese soldiers God. piled in front Damn. of him. 
Okay, so it's more than 98 because he killed the dudes in the tent and a couple more dudes before that. 100 was plus KDA. With 76 bullet holes and many bayonet wounds, That's a dude. 24 of which he may have suffered before actually dying. The blood trail on the ground showed that Damn. Solomon had repositioned the machine gun multiple he times while mortally wounded. Despite saving many lives that day, Solomon was denied the Medal of Honor due Why? to a rule in the Geneva Convention that no medical officer can bear arms against an enemy. Bruh. That is dumb as shit. Despite multiple recommendations from generals throughout the that years, so he stupid. remained a footnote in history until 2002, 2002, when Solomon was finally posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor from President George W. Bush. Hey, Fif good. Oh. 58 years later. Yeah, a little late, brother, but good. Damn, I never heard about these dudes. I was expecting to hear about them. That a Viking dude, that Chinese dude on the bridge. I was expecting to hear about people I knew. I've never heard about any of these. Anyway, let me know if you heard about any of these, and what do you think about Korean dude? That dude was a maniac! Still can't believe the shit he did! Let me know what you think about this video, should we check out any of your suggestions, put them in the comments or on Discord, we have a tab for that. Uh, I'm playing some Dead by Daylight later on today, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye everybody, have a good day.